All right, folks, my name is from Melbourne. With us, we have one and only Einar of Leprous. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Uh, I'm going to start off you know, from, on a very simple note, a question which I have for you, and I'm sure you are the only one who can answer. Yeah. And the question is, why is Leprous so fucking good? <laughs> I, I, I have no question. I have no answer to that, actually. <laughs> you can answer uh, that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, you obviously don't know Norwegian culture. We're not allowed to say positive things about ourselves. <laughs> we continue until it really, really makes us feel something. Like we we don't uh, we don't finish off a song before it really, really makes us feel something. Uh, and it's probably that. If it makes us feel something, then it might make other feel the same thing. I don't know. Um, uh, and um, it's uh, everything we do is like really, really out of passion. It's always been um, so. We're a very like passionate band that is like in the music. Like uh, it's what I'm thinking about. Like. Almost twenty four seven. It's uh, leprous related stuff and uh, mostly the musical part of it. So it's just like I don't know. <laughs> but I, I get that because you, uh, as you mentioned, that that twenty four bar seven. You think about the band. You think about let's say music in general. Mm -hmm. And you know, you had this album written. I'm sure you know as the album was announced, you may have written this probably first half of. Uh, 2017 and now that you have the album releasing in another one month there's this gap in the middle you know once the the product is ready mix mastered and then it is delivered to the label and then fans have to wait all the way till the release date it's that yeah. that that sort of a anxious feeling inside as a musician that how are fans going to receive it through the years uh, and especially now we've grown to become confident enough that like I know what I think about this product and I know uh, uh, how I feel about it and and just then I cannot I mean I cannot really be that stupid to, to really really enjoy something that everybody else will hate if you know what I mean <laughs> uh, and uh, and we're we're super confident about the new album, so we're absolutely not worried about reactions. Some people will dislike it as it always is, but but I think this album will appeal to absolutely appeal to the average Lepers fan, uh, both old and new, uh, and and also to maybe uh, be an opener for for new people. Uh, yeah, yeah. So so I I think definitely. Uh, with this album, we also come with a lot of confidence. So it's we're, we're when we receive. I mean, for reviews and everything now, it's just like, yeah, we're. You're seeing how people are, are perceiving it. I'm sure obviously yeah. you know our review is already out. A couple of other reviews are already out, and I'm sure you have read them, and that kind of gives you a little more confidence that okay, at least. The press is being positive, so that again adds to your already existing confidence that you know press have liked it, and I'm sure fans are going to get that as well. Mm. Yeah, I, I think so too. And, and also, I mean, we already got feedback a long time ago from label and and business management people in the business. I mean, and 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 it's all been like only overwhelmingly positive much more than with the previous album for example so i think even though there might be some people that prefer the congregation style or cold style or uh, bilateral style i think definitely this is the most uniting album that we've done so far yeah yeah, yeah. i like to what we used to be and who we are uh, yeah perfect man and all I can say about the record is I've been living, I've been breathing it from last three weeks. And oh. every day as I listen to it, and I'm not saying this just because I am a leprous fan, but as a musician myself, and most importantly, as a journalist, I feel that every note on this album is written straight from the bottom of your heart as well as the other members. Mm. There's a lot of soul. 
There's a lot of emotion in it, a lot of sadness in it, which immediately touched me during the first few minutes of the record. Mm. I want to start this this whole uh, this album, which we are going to discuss further. What primarily influenced you to take this approach, this soulful emotion approach? I mean, I'm a super emotional person, so so uh, so for me, I, I've been. It was easier to to let myself loose in the songwriting at, at this time around than with the congregation because we've done so much since then we've learned here and there so it was easier to just deliver to deliver our hearts on a plate in a way this time around and and, and I think this album has some of the saddest tunes that we've we've done but it also has some of the like least sad least sad tunes we've done in a very long time so in general the album is more uplifting than the congregation which had like mostly a super pessimistic uh, <laughs> view on absolutely everything uh, <laughs> and uh, especially lyrically and and um and musically also it wasn't like yeah um it was pretty uh, melancholic the whole thing so so I, I think also one of the reasons why we managed to like really feel the true emotions this time was that, that we we did the album completely finished more or less in the studio. There wasn't like any any uh, fixing it in the mix like before, or it, it was just like living it one hundred percent. I was in the studio for between 40 and 50 days maybe probably closer to 50 and i was there for the entire time and and that's quite a lo long time to be to be in the studio and i was just like that album was the only thing that i was uh, um uh, breathing in a way if through that entire period and that then you you let yourself loose and then you forget of the uh, you forget the outside world the uh, more and, and it was great to actually be in the studio for the whole for the whole process yeah right right you know somehow to me i mean maybe correct me if i'm wrong is this album somewhat personal to you especially from the lyrical aspects or yeah, for, do much for the lyrics that i wrote yes absolutely uh tour for um, uh, there was a bonneville uh especially the last milestone which is like so private that I will not go further into what it's about because I'm wanting to write that lyric for a long time, but I never had the guts to do it, and I still don't have the wish to speak about the the lyrics for, because it's it's yeah it's it's about something like really heavy for me. But um, and and do, and when I was in the studio doing that that tune, the, the last milestone, I, I was like. It was really, really hard for me to sing uh, because I thought about the lyrics. I thought about I, I was in the feel in the zone, and it was difficult. Uh, now that I've gotten some more distance to it, it's I don't really go that deep into it when I listen to it anymore because I've listened to it too many times. But uh, yeah. I can totally get that, man, and especially uh, you know the each track is placed uh, i i love the way first and foremost is how the track placements are because the essence the vibe previous track carries and ends and when the next one starts there is a connection i mm, felt that, i felt like it's like a journey for me instead of independent songs but it was more like a journey which is connected and when mm. I felt that the track listing, a lot of focus has been put where exactly each track has to go to not lose the the balance, to not lose the essence. And that's mm. where I, I I felt that is it because the the songs that you've written, the lyrics you've written, was it because you know it kind of forced you to place these songs in such a way that there's a seamless transition track after track? Uh, it, it's something that requires a lot of work, uh, which was much easier on the congregation, uh, and that that like it just it w it was just easier to do that on the congregation. But on this album, we went back and forth and back and forth. We're never satisfied with with the track list, and and we're challenging because 
It's like, ah, but if this one is here, then it will be weird that this one is here. And it was just like uh, moving it around a lot. And, and, and track lists, both live and, and on, a, on a record, that's, that means uh, everything uh, to us. Uh, it's super, super important. Um, uh, and uh, so, yeah, and for example, as, um, I will mention that song again, The Last Milestone. It wasn't actually supposed to be on the album. I was thinking about just releasing it as something different than Leprous because the other guys weren't involved with the tracks. So it was just like something that I, I, I composed and I wasn't sure. But then we tried it on the album and it was just like, yes. It fits uh, dude, exactly. Dude, yes. this is the perfect ending to Melina. Yeah, I'll, I'll talk yeah. about it a little later because I want to keep that because fans do not know what this track is all about, and I'm, I'm sure you don't want to talk about it. Which obviously, is I, the I case. can definitely talk about but, the music. But I'll tell you something from the musical point of view: that string session is not just beautiful; it's that haunting feeling in it, and with the vocals on top of it. Icing on the cake. In fact, that it's the final scene of a Romeo and a Juliet. It kind of sounds mm -hmm. like a soundtrack to it. And, you know, mm -hmm. there's that, that, that glimmer of hope in your vocals the moment that end, entire track ends. Mm. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I mean it's, it's the most hopeless song that in, in that sense, like, that we've, we've ever done. It, it's super... I mean... It doesn't have any hope uh, it, it, because it, it's just a pure tragedy, and and we. I wanted to. I actually made the music before the lyrics, but I already knew what which what what I wanted to write about, and and when I was in the music, I was just like closing my eyes, moving things here and there, and I was just. Yeah, yeah, very absurd. And it was written like very much. It was written just as a string piece. And then, uh, of obviously, uh, I needed to to book uh, a true a true you know, the live sessions for for the yeah, you know, yeah. the string section. Yeah, cool man. Yeah, yeah. Cool. awesome. Now you know the entire record is is not as chaotic as the congregation of the previous albums where there's there's uh, there's a good amount of odd time insanity which leprous is known for but at the same mm. time it's the soulful approach which you have taken on this was mm. it due to the subject matter that you're you're basically talking about that demanded this type of music to have you know to gel along with it it was more the other way around actually that um uh, when I started writing uh, the 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 tunes for the album, I felt immediately that ah, this has a different vibe. Uh, uh, this has a very different vibe. Let's just let's just uh, go very very deeply into that vibe and 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 really really purify it, if if you can say that. Um, and um, and so that that's what we did, but then again, there are some songs that d are pretty much in a kind of different vibe, which is what I actually like about this record. You have a song like uh, "Captive," for example, that could have been straight on the congregation, uh, in my opinion. Uh, uh, you have a song like uh, like uh, "Mirage," that's like very very much like a prog tune with a big P, the most like. <laughs> probably most pleasing to prog fans we've done in many years, I would say. And then you have others so that are... Something like Coma that can easily fit on Cole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, no, because uh, we would never manage to play that song back then. <laughs> That's the most insane song. I, it's, it's the most difficult song we've ever, ever, ever written, like, technically. It's, it's super, super insane to play that. Totally, man. I can understand. Now, coming to your vocals, now there's there's nothing anyone can say about it. You know, it's it's something that I can listen twenty four bar seven. You have seamlessly deviated from your screams in the previous album, and you've approached with this soulful, you know, feeling the vibe. Mm. It's it's a fabulous, and the only thing I can say is once once the fans get to hear it, the most important thing which I feel will come out of it is on stage. 
when you mm. are going to play these songs, it's going to sound fabulous. Mm. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I really think uh, these songs will 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 show their true nature anyway in, in a live context, and 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 we already tried it with uh, with uh, from the flame. Uh, we played it on three shows already, and uh, and it turned out uh, fantastic. Uh, uh, and and the feedback from the fans was was great. Uh, so yeah. Fantastic, dude. You know, Bard has brought in a lot of influences, you know, since the last record on this. He's not just yeah. a monster. He's not just a monster. And all. But as a musician, I feel he brings in a lot of those subtle things, you know, the fantastically executed ghost notes, the signature mm. tombo. There's a lot that this guy brings. You know, it kind of makes me feel that it's, it brings out the best in Leprous. From the yeah, signature yeah. songwriting to whatever you guys do, it, it brings out the best. I want to know how you work with him because you can let this guy lose and he's going to go nuts. So how is it yeah. that you work with Bard? I mean, or, or let's say as a unit, how do you guys start writing? Does it start with the riff? Does it start with the drums or it's just like the organic nature of both? No, I, um, I mean, uh, Bart is uh, one of the few drummers that has like that super technical um, playing style, but managed to combine it with a very, very loose and, and a really, really emotional way of playing. Uh, and it's really like making every hit count, um, and uh, which is a rare quality of, of a super technical drummer. Uh, uh, so, so when when I write the music, uh, which uh, I've been writing the the majority for, for the um, last years, uh, and um, I, I start with like guitar ideas that normally ends up with pretty similar as on the album, and then and then like a, like a simplified drum beat of what I know that he will will uh, uh, play. Uh, like that he will develop into his kind of thing later on um, so so what what we do then is that I, I send him the stuff this time around I asked we actually agreed on that he shouldn't listen too much to the drums that I programmed um, except on some songs where it was inevitable because it's a very strange kind of <laughs> rhythms but uh, um, but and then uh, we schedule a couple of sessions uh, at the, at his home, hearing what he had done with it, and and it was uh, yeah, uh, it really really made all the difference, and and he added a lot of a lot of character to the drums this time, and I think he stepped up the game like a lot since the last album. Uh, not that he wasn't good on the congregation, but now it it went from really really great to like amazing absolutely mind-blowing the the drums that he did for this album and and i was really surprised like knowing him knowing board like being the most uh, hyperactive person on the planet uh it's it's really really impressive to see that he managed to to play like sometimes so beautifully minimalistic and sometimes exactly with the amount of uh, of um, <laughs> energy that needs and and yeah yeah, yeah. and so uh, so it, it's yeah he uh, he blew our minds with his record definitely. you know from your personal uh, you know you've been part of literally the the, since the beginning of the band, you've seen all the ups and downs, you've seen the band grow. I want to ask one question here to you, that when people, your fans, listen to Melina, what do you want them to take away from this? What message from this album do you think fans can take away and apply, you know? I mean, there, there, is, there is no overall message like, but musically I want them to feel something, I want them to feel I want them to go some tracks to to make them f dig deep into their to their uh, emotions, uh, while I want other tracks to make them feel good. So uh, in a way, I want them to to feel the album as as an emotional journey, um, uh, most of all. But then again, who am I to tell what other people should feel? Uh, 
I, I honestly I hope that everyone will feel it different. <laughs> so, so, yeah. We we all have our own ways of expressing, and and at the end of the day, good music is good good music, and I'm sure yeah, yeah. fans will have uh, the similar thinking. So uh, once again, in our you know always a pleasure having a chat with you. My experience with Leprous was first time at Bangalore Open Air, a yeah. few years ago when you came with Isan, and since then we've been waiting for you to come back here. I don't know when yeah, it's going to happen, but whenever it's going to happen, I'm sure a lot of old memories will come out. Yeah, yeah, I really hope we'll get to come back to India for sure. And in conclusion, how would you describe the sound of Melina in a sentence? Uh, much more organic and um, open and soulful than what we've done before. Perfect, man. Thank you so much. Good luck with the release, right. buddy. I'll catch you on road someday. Thanks, man. Take I hope care. so. Bye. Take care, man. Bye-bye.